Hello everybody, my name is Hal Kaiser and welcome back to Devil M DMC Devil May Cry in this case. Uh, it's been like three weeks for me. Uh, I had a real bad, technically month, around the end of, this is like September 21st when I'm recording this. About the end of August, like August 31st, something like that, September 1st, something like that. I had real bad stiffness in my neck and it spread to my back and I had to go to the doctor finally. I just couldn't take it no more. He said I was having uh, muscle spasms and so I've been just laid up for like three weeks in real bad pain. And so finally I'm feeling good enough to get back up and start recording and stuff. And so I just hope I haven't lost some of the muscle memory for this. Because that's something I always fear when it comes to doing stuff like this, that I will just start forgetting. Because if you haven't played some of these games like every day, you do start to kind of lose the feel for it, if you know what I mean. Where are you now, Dante? So stay low. Mundus doesn't know I exist, so I'll remain hidden until we're ready to strike. Cat knows the virility factor. What lies beneath? She will be your guide. Drink virility, fitter, smarter, sexier. Yeah, that guy sure is. See, if it's that easy for them to drag him into limbo, how does he ever make it walking down the street? And even the game doesn't explain it. <laughs> See, it, it's sort of the story is so. So, how does? And if she can get hurts in limbo, she'll die in real life. How does she survive? You know, couldn't any demon just kill her just walking down the street? Okay, I've got to pause because after three weeks, I'm more critical of this game than I was before. I was trying to be nice. I don't care no more. I'm not feeling good. Uh, I've said it before. How does this freaking limbo system work? This was inspired by Bayonetta. This came out in like 2013. Bayonetta came out in 2009, a year after DMC4. Uh, and if you think about it, especially, it's harder once you get to like the later levels, you just quit seeing pedestrians and stuff as much. But especially in those early levels, you're in Purgatorio and, Bay and Bayonetta. You're in this land in between the physical realm and the spiritual and, you know, the heavenly and demonic realms. You're in, there's, there's Earth, the way they describe it. There's Paradiso, Inferno, and Purgatorio or something like that. That's the way they describe it. And so you can see like these people's silhouettes, same as you can in, in Devil DMC, but with a little more color in their case. They're just clear silhouettes in Bayonetta. And they could like react to things going on. Like you shoot your gun and they'll be startled, or if you walk through them, they get like a cold chill. But other than that, it was just more of a framing device, you know, for, oh yeah, she's in reality, but she's not in reality. But you could tell that she willingly went into it you know it was never like she's forced into purgatorio how does this work you know it, it the way you see like these writing on the wall like hatred and stuff like that you think is that like mundus or is this just like any random demon like any of these little low life mannequin things can pull him into the limbo you know it, it's stupid and if he's supposed to be as powerful as he is being a nephilim couldn't he just like snap his fingers and undo it you know it's just it's one of those things that the story literally makes absolutely no sense. Crap. I'm a little out of shape here. There we go. Cock. What the heck? Using a fully charged rebellion drive move makes the Ravengers attack.
Whoa! There we go. I could have done far better there, I'm not gonna lie. But man, the music is still good. The only redeeming quality of this game is the combat still holds up being pretty fun. I'm not going to pretend. Get up there and rip you apart. Why can't I just use the whip from up here? I mean, realistically speaking, there's no reason why he couldn't... You mean to tell me that whip doesn't have that much distance? Or whatever you want to call it. I call it a whip. It looks like a freaking whip. See, like, some of the stuff looks really cool in Limbo. Like, the way it kind of looks like time is like moving yet it's not moving and the way the world kind of crumbles and like see where he stands and stuff sometimes changes is really cool however it's not it's not like it's that life alteringly different like this reality of this game world is that pretty that you know there's other games in my opinion bayonetta that came out four years sooner looked prettier than this game does on you know, that's my opinion. You, you don't have to like it if you don't want to. There we go. Okay, anything else around here? How many... Look, there's a lot of lost souls in this level. Are you serious, cock? I'm hitting the frickin' button. Yeah, although people praise this game for having smoother platforming, it's not always super obvious as to what you're supposed to do. Okay, wouldn't that be enough to get him out of limbo if the camera spotted him and dragged him in? It's dead now. sent me the camera locations for this area. Best avoid them if we can. Follow me. Okay, see what I mean? The city itself is trying to stop him. How? Explain this to me. I'm not asking for a lot here. This is made by a Western game developer. You know, you can say American. I don't know if they're based from there, but you get the point. You know, Western sensibilities, so... You look at what a Western game is. I'm not talking like a uh, Red Dead Redemption. You you mean Western game studios, and that's where it's base. So you're looking at stuff like, uh, what's a good description of that? You know, like uh, Santa Monica Studios. You know, the guys who made like God of War. That's a Western game, and stuff like that. Anything based out of, you know, those Western sensibilities. Not as much like ja Japan and stuff like that's more concerned like Eastern game companies. You can say Ubisoft, I believe, is considered like a Western game developer. And this story is more confusing than anything Devil May Cry's original series did. And you got to think about it. Devil May Cry 1 was done by the same guy who did Bayonetta. Devil May Cry 2 was done by a completely different developer. And it was already started before the guy who did 1 even knew that they were going to do a sequel. Uh, he had a whole different plan for it. And I'll discuss that more in the essay video. And so Devil May Cry 2 was a mess. Devil May Cry 3 was done a little differently, had a different art style, because it was done by the people who did Persona. Atlas teamed up with them for 3 and 4. Uh, DMC 4 is a half-finished game. The story is held together with bits and pieces, and it's the weakest entry in terms of story in the entire franchise. Even well, 2, I think, still holds that honor, but you get what I mean. And then 5 is, a re is like a sequel 11 years after the original or the last game in the franchise came out. And so there's a lot of stuff there. Yet it still has a better storyline. If you just give somebody a summary of DMC's storyline, they can understand it pretty well, all the major players. You try to explain this game to somebody, their head's going to be spinning. And this is just one video game. You get the, the point. Oh, hello. Oh, come on. 
There we go. See what I mean? Like, the way they do some of that, it looks cool, but at the same time, it's completely unnecessary as well. Okay, which way did the little darling go? Not this way. Whoa! Okay, I can't do nothing about that because I don't have the right tool. Which is increasingly annoying. See what I mean? Who is the voice doing that? Repeatedly press to shoot demonic shards. Nicely done, girls. Yeah, there's a key over there, but I guess I have to smash that thing to get to it, and I can't do that. And the city is again trying to stop me, I guess. Don't know what the city has against him, but again, he's such a prick, I wouldn't be surprised that his own city would hate him. Shielded Pathos. Oh, we already had Shielded Bathos, now we got Shielded Pathos. Man, that music is pumping, though. I, I, I can't deny how good the frickin' soundtrack of this game is. Cock. Grab him. Oh, are you serious? Oh boy, we got the chainsaw back. Crap. And again. Really getting sick of this. Whoa. Okay, I could have done far better there. I was having a little difficulty if you couldn't tell. Ooh. I see a lost soul and I see a place to fly. Are you serious? Okay, maybe if I jump up here. Yes! There we go. Getting smart. Got him. Yeah, you get concept art and stuff for doing like different things at the levels, but one of the main things is killing lost souls grants additional uh, concept art and stuff. And looking at the concept art is kind of interesting in this game. I like to look at concept art in lots of games, but this one especially, because you could see, I don't know if I really showed much of it in the last episode. It's been a while since I played, so I'm not really good at remembering. But DMC... Almost looked like a completely different direction. I don't know if you remember the original reveal trailer, but it looked a little different than the finished product. Uh, like, you could tell that Dante's hair was like, sh had shoe polish or something in it, like hair dye, because you could see the gray roots underneath. And his jacket was like spray painted red, which I thought looked really cool. Uh, and if they'd stuck with that, it might have been much better. Okay, uh, let's get Rico's shot. There we go. There you are. Here I am. This isn't good. It's the walls. Get out of here. Oh crap. How does she see all this other than just being a medium, you know? They don't do a great job of explaining if she's there. How is she able to see everything? How If she dies, if somebody touches her in there, you know, if they kill her from limbo, she'll die. How come she doesn't die when the walls cave in, you know? It's very badly explained. Oh, Lord. Okay, now, 
I hate to pause again, but let me try to explain this. These color-coded enemies, there's Frost Knights and like Fire Knights. I think I explained this at the beginning. If you try to hit them with like a demonic weapon in the original game, it would bounce off of them. Or if you try to hit them with a normal weapon. The only thing that could damage them is the color-coded weapons. So angel weapons can heal, kill frost enemies. Uh, they fix that in this version. You can't even toggle it on or off. The only problem is, you know how like the chainsaw enemies, when they're revving up to attack, can still charge their attack? Unless you hit them with like something that will stagger them? Well, same principle goes to these enemies now. If you hit them with the blue weapon, it stuns them and stuff like that. But if you hit them with a normal weapon, you're still going to get attacked. So it's not really like a proper improvement. They could have just turned all that crap off. They just chose not to. Come on. Crap. See, you can't even whip grab them, which is stupid. But see, it does somewhat affect them, but not nearly as well. See what I mean? It's quite pathetic, actually. Crap. Whoa! Nice try, Scooter. Crap. Whoa. Man, what's the camera doing? Okay, pretty good combo, but it could have been better. See, explain to me if I'm supposed to avoid these things, why are they all over the place? You know, the game just does a, a frankly terrible job of trying to explain some of this stuff to you. It, It's like they had the idea more so than they actually had the, the quote-unquote finished product. And so everything feels really half-baked, and like there's an idea here, but it's not really expanded upon like it should be. Okay, how the heck am I supposed to get up there? Because I ain't got enough lift here, and he can't like step off of the environment, so there's just no getting up there unless there's something to pull out and fly from. Like, how the heck am I supposed to get up there, too? I thought maybe these would extend out, but apparently they don't. Why are some of these people like gold, you know? It doesn't really make a lot of sense, either. A lot of this is just one of those things where you look at it and you keep saying to yourself, Yep, I don't quite understand that. And I don't think that was their goal. If it was, it's a very bad goal to have. And you could start to say, if you wanted to, that, Oh, well, they were waiting for the sequel to explain some of that. You don't do that. If you have to exp have a second game to explain your game, that's pretty bad writing. You know, you never rely on a sequel to tell a story. If you're if you're really good as a writer, uh, or unless you're if you're not being forced to by a developer, you know, you should always tell the story. I mean, by a publisher, you should always tell the story you want to tell. Make room for a sequel, but never make it so that it's. It's a forced thing. Okay, uh, where to next? Climb up, you bastard. I like the idea of adding traversal challenges 
to the secret rooms, though. It does break up the monotony of, oh, just hover in the air for 20 seconds, or kill all these enemies without taking damage. You'd have to be an idiot not to be able to complete that in the time limit. Compared to DMC4, these are easy. Like, you saw some of those, they were freaking ridiculous. Okay, sweet, now I have a health cross, so I get a little extra health. Okay, back from whence I came. Oh, hello. Okay, gotta keep moving on. And it'll be the same. Nope, it's not the same animation, at least. One more. There we go. Oh, but I don't have the freaking key, naturally. Over here, Dante. We're clear. For the time being. Oh, hang on, let me grab this. There's a lost soul up there, too. Seems like all the freaking lost souls are just right there. I'm guessing this is the only other part of the level. Spells can take hours, if not days, to prepare. So why not can it for instant use later? And they do with cheese. <laughs> Where'd you learn this stuff? Virgil taught me the basics of demonology and occultism. Built a natural talent for it. Said it would help me to focus on something constructive instead of. Instead of what? Instead of focusing on nightmares. Okay. There you go. Shit. Cops. I gotta go. I'll find you. Why are the cops there for her? Take out the camera. Okay, uh, as I was... Well, no, not as I was saying, just as I was thinking. I know that there was like a comic book series. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm pausing it. I never have read the comics, so I don't know exactly what all they added. I've heard some people say this was to be that Cat and Virgil were in love, and he wiped her memory, and that's where, like, her nightmares and stuff came from. I don't know if that's true or not, because, like I said, I never read them. Honestly, I don't get why they would... You know, if they thought that the Japanese story was strange with having Trish look like his mother, and the original... I'm sorry I can't say his name, and I'm sorry... I, I'm not going to try to butcher it, and I can't remember it either. Uh, he's... From what I recall, he said that in his sequel... He planned on Dante and Trish being a married couple, and she would have been the secondary protagonist, and it would have been a split story between them stopping some new demon. Uh, some people think it's weird that she looks like his mother, or some people say she's a clone. She's not a clone, she just looks like his mother. You know, he put his mom's face on this woman to draw him in. So I don't think it's that odd. Is it somewhat strange? Yes, but in Japanese stuff, <laughs> more normal than I've seen other things. Uh, but here, having his brother be with this girl, which is the only other thing that could have made Virgil interesting and human, you know, because he's such a, he's just as much a douche as Dante is really here. And then having wipe her memory and then kind of allude to Dante getting with her, isn't that just sort of odd, just like two twins just sharing some girl, you know? Well, what am I supposed to know, you know? I'm just one of the fans of the original, so I'm just probably hating on this game is what a lot of people would say, okay, how are you supposed to get up there? Because that's freaking impossible. Oh, I see. There we go, got it. Oh. Okay, I hear another one of those poor fellas. Of course. Come on, then, you little shits. Do you really have to add the language in, brother? 
I'm pretty sure they get it, but regardless. There. Let's see if back here. I'm guessing there's still a fight on my hands, but it doesn't really matter right now. Got it. I've almost got enough money to get that other health upgrade. Or, yeah, I'm saving up for the health upgrade, anyway. It'd be nice if he could hit that thing. Why isn't he not hitting it this time? What's the problem? It's like he's just not hitting it. There we go. Oh, hello. Crap. Do you mind? Are you serious? How can that thing hit me from on the ground? You think it would at least have to jump? Come on. There we go. Yeah, we're good to go. For now. Whoa, mama. Was that like an angel pole? No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that is a unusual looking statue to have in a town. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not done with me. Okay. Okay, crap. Okay, hang on. Okay, what does that do for me exactly there? Whoa. Okay, I'm sliding. I don't know why he bothered shooting that. I mean, the regular Dante would just smash through it and pull the shards out of his body. So you can't even get up a good combo with these things. Crap. No, no, no. Whoa. Whoa. Thank you. <laughs> There we go. Okay, now we gotta fight the tyrant. Can you hear me? 
I think this is where we find. Yep, Tyrant. I still remember this monster's name, but I can't remember almost any of the others. Are you serious? The original would have a nice cheeky little line for this guy. Cock. Cock. There we go. I think he's mad. Yep, he's definitely mad. The harder they fall. It's like he really just couldn't think of nothing better to say there. And why did they say flock off Featherface is the trophy for beating that thing? You'd think at least maybe the hunter would be that, even though he wasn't really feathered, you know. I, I know that they're just using oh crap. Dante, they're just using lines from the original games for the trophies. But still. Crap. Because it keeps pulling apart, it's awful difficult. Dante, run! I am running. Come on. Oh, come on. See, what's the point if they pull the tiles away of giving me a way of getting through? You know what I mean? If the demons are in charge... They're making it easy for me to escape. I just seem to drag on forever. Church. If you have to explain a joke, then it's not funny, my friend. The police have released footage of the terror. Oh, we got Sean Hannity here. <laughs> At St. Agrius' church. He goes by the name of Dante. Remember his face, people. If you see him, inform the police immediately, but do not approach him. He has a history of physical violence and is a known sexual deviant. Why? Because he likes threesomes? Just doing God's work. Okay, so what was our score for that mission? SS on style points, sweet. D on time. 83% completion rate. So I got a B. I've had far worse. Okay, so can I afford another health cross? No, but I'm almost there. Okay, what kind of upgrades do we have? available to us here realistically speaking i tend to use the drive a lot especially like overdrive so i might upgrade that i honestly don't really know okay yeah i think i'll get rico shot level two because that's what i've been wanting to use Okay, I'm not good with stuff like that, but I might go ahead and get those. But I think what I'm going to do is level up something, you know, actually useful first. So I'll get something like, uh... Have I got, like, Stingers level 2? I think so, didn't I? No, I never did. Uh... I'll get Ray's level two because I know that's that's the one where he goes up. It'd be uh, Streak. There we go. I like Osiris. It's one of my favorite weapons to have come from this re reboot. I do like how the loading screens show off the combos, but I still wish they just copied Bayonetta a little further and just added the uh, training room between the, the loading screen.
anybody who would believe that crap is an idiot. <laughs> How do people actually fall for this crap? Exactly. If you're told something's true often enough, you tend to believe it. Told me I was crazy for seeing demons. You know, this game's supposed to be like a political commentary, you know. Hang on, I'll talk more about it. Make me better. You lied. You just wanted to keep me weak. Docile. How did you figure it all out? Virgil pulled me out of the nightmare. You? When the people you're supposed oh, to great. most turn out to be... So the people of the people of the orphanage were demons. Fought back, killed, no matter the consequences. So I chose my path and I lived by it. But after all that anger, violence, and death, you have to dig deep. Dig into your own heart. That is still one of the goofiest things. Or if you can still call yourself human. I wasn't crazy. Okay, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more here in a, a second. I'm sorry I keep pausing, but this game's just one of those where you cannot help but have a lot of what moments, you know what I mean? The succubus is hidden deep inside the factory, but there is no physical way to reach it from our world. Only from Limbo. There's a rift inside. Rest assured that yeah, they wouldn't have that door keypadded, would they? Even though it looks like there's a keypad on it. Okay. Number one. Let's talk about the succubus. You haven't seen it yet. Trust me. You, it, what is it you think of when you see succubus? Like, let's talk about Capcom for a second. The publishers of this game. They got a very famous succubus from a very mediocre fighting series. It's not even mediocre. It was good, but... Let's just say underrated fighting series. That's a nice way to put it. Forgotten, maybe. They haven't made one since the PS2 era, and that was just a Japanese-only collection of the ones from the PS1, the Darkstalkers series, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Darkstalkers 1 and 3 was on the PS3. Darkstalkers 2 was, like, on the Saturn. Uh, you may have seen her in Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, Morga Morgan, or Morgana, something like that is her name. Uh, Moriana, something, I'm pretty sure it's Morgan. Uh, the succubus from Darksiders, you know, teal, bluish hair, very low-cut top. That's a succubus, you know. Uh, you picture, you know, something like The Witcher, if you've seen any animes, you know, you, you know what a succubus looks like, you know. You know what an incubus looks like, you know, it's a... A very attractive man or woman who gains energy through sex and stuff. You know, kills people or was whatever. You can insert whatever subgenre of them you want. But they, at the end of the day, they got like bat wings and horns and a tail, and they are very sexual and very beautiful. That's not what you're going to see in this game. So I don't even know why they call it a succubus. They could have named it anything else. Uh, number two, I don't mind. A game having sexual content or alluding to sexual content, it, it's fine, you know. I, I'm one of those people that I don't believe in censorship at all. Like, I recently read that Blizzard was reducing the amount of breast exposure in World of Warcraft. I'm not a World of Warcraft fan. I played it a little bit. It's not my thing. Uh, but, like, it's supposed to be like they're covering up more NPCs, you know, r raising the the shirt line or the armor line, whatever you want to call it, on their breast and covering more paintings and statues are being modified as well. You know, I don't see why you should do that. It's a video game, you know. It's like, mostly, you can say it's for whatever reason, it's offensive to women. Most women don't play video games. And the ones that do, if you look on Twitch, I mean, trust me, they ain't afraid to show off what they got, so I'm pretty sure they ain't afraid of seeing it in a video game. Most of them. Uh, but when you see a game like this, it just shows what looks like a teenage Dante. Which let's say he's in his 20s here. Let's say he's 22. I don't know how old he is. He's not that old. Let's say he's like 16, 15, because he was pretty skinny looking in those pictures. Uh, 
you know, angels and maybe demons or just regular women, because only like one had actual flapping angel wings uh, in bed with him. You know, it's just it takes away from his character. You know what I mean? It's just like you cannot see this guy getting laid. You know what I mean? Uh, he he's one of those types they have to show him in the front cover of the game with like four or five angels just pawing at him. They show him in the beginning of the game having a threesome, and they show him in that cutscene having a looks like a freaking orgy. Uh, you know, it's just it, it takes a. Does it need to be part of his character? No, I know that they seem for some reason to think he was a gay cowboy, but what's wrong with a freaking gay cowboy? He was the he was the better version. I want to see Dante make you know. In a Shakespearean-like play, sitting there, playing along with his enemies and having a good time. Because, you know, that's the thing. He had a good time. This Dante seems like with all the debauchery and partying he does, he's still freaking miserable. The other Dante, he just had pizza and a strawberry sundae, and he was in crippling debt, but he seemed to always be having a good time. You know what I mean? It's just... You can't like him. They're trying very hard to make you say, oh yeah, he's cool. He, he's American, yet he has a British flag on his jacket. And he doesn't... Res he... This way, I think. I, I don't mean to keep pausing. You said you'd been here before. Yes, but it was during an out-of-body experience years ago. Of course. And flying around in spirit form. Yeah, in limbo. Virgil says it could be an effective intelligence gathering tool, but I can't do it at will. So, how did you do it before? It was triggered by extreme psychosomatic trauma. The nightmares. What are the nightmares? It's in the past now. Okay, uh, as I was saying... God help me, what was I saying? It's gone. I don't know, you, you know what I'm saying. You get, oh yeah, they said that they took his personality from his weapons name, the Rebellion. You know, they decided to take it one step further than that just being his sword. You know, that's his... Personality, that's the, the symbol of the game, is rebellion. But, I mean, you can have a rebel and have him have a little bit more personality. Other than, I mean, he doesn't even seem like a rebel type. He's just a douche. You know what I mean? You can only do so much with a character. And if, there, if the character isn't even the symbol that you say you based him off of, then what exactly is he at a certain point is what you got to start asking yourself. Okay, which way is she gonna go? She's gonna go that way, so I'll go this way and see if there's any- I highly doubt there's anything here. But if there's like a key or something, I'd be remiss for not picking it up. I can't even jump in reality. You know, like I said, they should have done like levels where Virgil was taken down. So we could have played as both the brothers. You know, and that would have been really cool, because in the reboot, they could be best friends, you know? <laughs> But no, they, they're not going to take any good ideas and run with them. They took all the bad ideas and ran with it. Because Virgil, in the original timeline, from the original game and its creator, was supposed to have been captured from childhood. You know, when Ava died, he was supposed to have been kidnapped then, and that was it. Uh, so, you know, he was never going to be a, a playable character again. He might have been brought up. I mean, or a rival, but he was never going to be like Virgil, like we know now. Uh, this is where they store the merchandise. So that could have been a fix. You know, okay, just have them be brothers and be friends. Because they had to write him as the villain in 3, because it was a prequel, you know? I expected it to be bigger. A lot bigger. But then, I was just a child when I was here. And I was in limbo. What are you doing here? Escaping my nightmares. You came to Limbo to escape your nightmares? Yes. Wouldn't it be easier just to wake up? Yeah, even his face. You know, just the story is one of those things where it just doesn't. Maybe if they gave us a little bit more time That's with this limbo. character. All you have to do is retrace your steps back to the mixing room. Should be easy enough. Maybe. But the demons may sense you once you're in limbo, so stay alert. They seem to always What's know up, where he's at. Room? You'll be able to descend deep down into the factory. And kill me a succubus. Oh lord, not the succubus fight. I remember it far too well. 
one of the most memorable sequences of this game, and not for the right reasons. Okay, it's here. All right, see you on the other side. And of course. Yep, because that's how limbos worked before. Also, you didn't tell me they never encountered any security on their little path. Down here. Oh. Good. You're right. It's a lot bigger here in limbo. What next? Head back to the mixing room. I'll meet you there. Obesity. Stupidity. Drink virility. See what I mean? Like, I get the idea of, like, the the They Live style messages. Like, if you've never seen They Live, it's that action movie by uh, John Carpenter. Uh, it had uh, Rudy Piper in it and uh, Keith David in one of the greatest fight scenes you'll ever see in a movie. Uh, but, hang on, sorry about that. But the, the story was about these aliens that had taken over uh, our planet and they were controlling the populace with these hidden messages and by most of the people in power being a part of their little uh, inner circle of aliens or uh, people that was in their circle of trust. That it? Yep. Not even enough to worry about. Cock. There we go. I'm trying to find like the ways that have like anything secret hidden in them, you know. But I don't think I'm actually going to find too many of those. I just don't want to accidentally miss anything. And this seems like the perfect kind of level design that if you take the right path instead of the left path, you're going to have a hard time finding whatever it is you're trying to find. And now we got Fire Knights, or whatever they're called in this game. Flame Knights. Hell Knights. Hell Knight, yeah. Hey, could you point me to the mixing room? Yeah, okay, that that gets really annoying fast. Yeah, it's kind of hard to make good combos using just the frickin' axe. Because the axe has almost no good combos. And see, enemies will just fall right through your fingers with it. Whoa! There we go. Whoa!
Whoa, crap. Crap. Whoa. Crap. Can any more of these things spawn in that I have to devote my time to? If this thing would just... It gets very difficult to sometimes remember that you're supposed to hit a specific button, you know? Like, I'm not... I'm used to switching weapons. I'm not used to this. And it becomes somewhat difficult, you know? I'm muscle memory trained for the the other games. I'm not trained for this game, and so it messes with my head sometimes. And I'll go to hit a button, and I'll hit the wrong button, and I, I get very tired of it. At least now, next time I come out at a health thing, I have enough money I can buy that new health cross. Hello. Thank you. Stupidity. Obesity. Any other messages you want to send me other than just those? Crap. Yeah, just fall through. Yep, good. That's what I actually wanted to do there, because I want to land over here if humanly possible. There we go. You now, anything over there? Not that I can tell. We only got a few more minutes left, so I'm trying my best to do everything right the first time. Oh, I think I went the wrong way. Yes, I did. Okay, what's in here? Okay, I can't access that, naturally. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to go over here. See, like, the levels look kind of interesting, but at the same time, it's just a bunch of cargo containers floating in the air. Uh, they could have done so much more with this art style than just this, because ultimately... It's not really that pretty. You know, maybe for the time it looked cooler, but we've seen different stuff like this before, and it looks so cool when it's done the correct way. Oh, I just went back to where I came. I didn't really do nothing different. Okay. Of course. This was like the demo level, too. I don't know if it was this whole level, but I know that this was the demo level that they showed off a lot when this game was first being uh, about to come out and being marketed. I don't. I think they released a, a demo. I would, I'm not certain about that, because by 2013, demos was becoming uh, less and less of a thing, you know. Oh, I was supposed to go straight through here. I'm an idiot. But at least I got those two lost souls. So now I can charge it. To level two, and I get that good Rico shot. Okay. Hello. Poison. I'm hitting the button. There we go. Health cross. There we go. Uh, I want my next upgrade. I might try to finish out the. I might get Raise level 2, and then I wouldn't mind getting something like Feed, but I don't really use it enough. I'd say for it to be super useful. What I might get next is uh, like Trillion Stabs level 2 and Stinger level 2 or something like that. Or upgrade Trinity Smash. 
Yeah, because I tend to use Trinity Smash a lot, so I might do that. Okay. I still don't see what the purpose of those are and how they can spurt blood out if they're literally just shards. You know, like metal shards or whatever. How can they have any blood? But then again, who am I to even ask these questions? Okay. Got lots of health items. I don't think I've ever used a single health item in this game, by the way. That was really easy. See, they throw a lot of enemies at you, but this is Nephilim difficulty. This is what would be considered probably like uh, Son of Sparta difficulty by the regular games, because there's like normal and demon hunt, e human and demon hunter, and stuff like that. So this would be like the lockable difficulty within the, reg the regular series, and it is this easy, you know? The hardcore mode is a little bit more difficult, but really, it's not really like changing that much in terms of damage numbers and stuff. It's just changing like parry times and smaller details such as that. Okay, is there like any way? There is, but you gotta go high to get there. There is a lost soul over here, though. Can I get to it? No. Okay, where to next? Nothing here to stand on. And down I go. Of course. There we go. I don't get why we need that little roll there. I hear all those lost souls around me. Nothing I can really do until I climb higher. I got about two minutes left. I'll see what I can do within the time span of two minutes. Other than claim a few of these lost souls. Okay, there's not that many. I might get them all here if I'm smart. Wouldn't you know? Okay, moving on. Don't worry, I'm coming to free you. Honestly, I don't think this Dante would free Lost Souls, so I mean, I feel like that's sort of a strange marketing campaign to have for this character, you know, not even, I wouldn't call it a marketing campaign, but having like an action in game in terms of a collectible is him freeing Lost Souls, you know, because he seems like such a douche that he'd say, well, they lose, you know, they got what they deserve for being here, you know, or they're in his way, and so he's not going to go you know, out of his way. I, I don't know how to describe it. Of course. Demon mode renders Dante immune to the Hell Knight's ground inferno. Oh, so if I have demon weapons equipped is what it's trying to tell me. Are you serious? There we go. I like how they call this freaking demon mode, and it's just an axe being on his back. I mean, they certainly could have been just slightly more creative. I know that they could have. I could come up with something better. I know we're at the end of our time. I'll see if I can crack this sucker open real quick, which I don't think I can because I don't think I can demon pull to it.
I'm not actually hitting that. Now I am. A little bit. Come on. It's growing back faster than I can actually hit it. And of course I fall. Okay, I'll give that one more chance, and then I'll end the episode, I promise. How? Well, I know I can climb up there from somewhere here. Apparently I can't, so this is all I got. Okay, I don't think I can do that. I think this is a situation where, once again, you need another weapon or ability that you don't quite have yet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, like I said, I think I've voiced my opinion on this. We're on, like, what, mission six? And I think there's, like, 20 missions or so in this. And not exactly what I would call enjoying it. Uh... I hope you guys have enjoyed so far though. I'm glad to be back. I'm going to try my best to get this series finished uh, rather quickly and move on to better things. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your evening.